The first time Montrealer UBC professor Rhodes scholar Karen Le Bion set foot in France, she was utterly seduced. In French culture, where kids eat what adults eat and where kids do not snack between meals, her kids were not utterly seduced. Lots of hours of cultural adjustment later, her well-traveled children, Claire and Sophie, embrace slow food and are no longer picky eaters. The family stories are wrapped in a seductive book called French Kids Eat Everything and Yours Can Too. It is my pleasure to welcome Karen LeBion to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you for having me. It's a real delight to be here. How nice to meet you. And you're telling me that Sophie, who is eight, and Claire, who is four, are not picky eaters, really? You know, they have gotten over most of their picky eating. If you ask Sophie if there's anything she won't eat, stinky blue cheese, but she says, I know I'll like it when I grow up. <laughs> of course. So, well, yeah, they got over it, which is astounding. Well, you know, some, some French... Uh, mothers I know feed their babies blue cheese. They do, even before they can eat solid foods because it's soft and it's salty. They eat it with a spoon. The babies love it. And mm. when I saw that, I was shocked. And all right. And who cares about bad breath when you're three months old? Well, you know, the thing about the French is food is a pleasure. Food mm -hmm. is fun. Why wouldn't you have your baby explore all of these fun tastes? Mm -hmm. And that's why they're doing it. I mean, they're also doing it because they know that if you teach your child to love lots of things before the inevitable no phase starts kicking in mm -hmm. around two or three, right. you're going to be better set up to cope. So they actually do focus on introducing lots of tastes and textures early on. And pleasure and, and joy. As, because it's fun. So they start them off, for example, not with rice cereal, but with leek soup. <laughs> really? Vegetable soup. Yes. Yum, yum. <laughs> Baby vichyssoise. Baby vichyssoise. You have yeah. a recipe in I here do. for that. I do. But they don't make it strong. You know, my recipe mixes leek with pear and a few other things to make it mild. So it's, you know, they, they still take a, a, into account the fact that kids have sensitive tastes. But the idea is to introduce them to their, all the things they will like when they grow up. Take me back to your roots. Born in Montreal. Right. Uh, went on to Oxford, studied, met a fabulous French man named Philippe, yes. like you do in the movies? Yeah. <laughs> it was a little really? bit of a surprise. Well, you know, Oxford is a small, cramped place, and so the department when we were studying didn't have enough desks for the students, so they give two students one desk and one chair to share. And I got stuck with this Frenchman who at, at the time I didn't think, I didn't like him very much. I thought he was just so full of himself and, and anyway. he probably was. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you know, we're traveling around France together eating, you know, baguette and goat's cheese. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the rest is history. The rest two, is history. Two children later. Yes. And you moved to Vancouver. Yeah. And you, you're teaching at UBC That's as right. we speak. Yes. In water governance, yeah, geography. Yeah, I work on water, environmental studies, mm -hmm. and I teach about environmental management and sustainability. When did you decide to take the fam, the fam, the family, to France? It was after our second daughter was born, and I have to admit, my husband, who loves uh, Canada, was feeling really homesick for France. So we decided to take our year off, our sabbatical, mm -hmm. and go to France. We were both teaching at universities in France, associated with universities there, and doing research. So off we go with our four-year-old and our baby-turning toddler. And pack up and and yeah and basically arrive in the small village in northern France where my husband is from, on the north coast of Brittany, and settle in for a year. Mm. It sounds like you're living the dream, but uh, I know it's not all a dream in France. Uh, tell me about your culture shock, or did you have any? I had lots of culture shock. Now I'd been going back and forth for ten years at that point, then and I just assumed I would fit right in. Little did I know, my husband warned me, but I didn't listen. He's like, it's not the same, living there's not the same. But anyway, so off we go, and we arrive, and I just assume that because I speak French and my kids speak French, it's going to be great. But I didn't realize that um, the way that people interact is really different than here. They're much more reserved and- In France. Oh yes, much more cautious about making friends, especially in the small village. And the biggest issue my kids had to deal with was how differently they were expected to eat at daycare and at school. Mm -hmm. My older daughter was starting kindergarten. You don't get a packed lunch from home. You have the three or four course hot lunch freshly prepared every day by the cooks. She had to eat things like beet salad. We were, meanwhile, serving her pasta with Parmesan every day. <laughs> and I just thought, she's going to be starving at school. It'll ruin her school experience. How can she learn? Went mm -hmm. to see the teacher. They would have none of it. 
their role was to educate her in spite of me and my strange food habits, and they were going to educate her. Well, as I recall, you went to see the teacher with a small little lunch bag yes. for your dear daughter because you thought she would starve. Yes. And, and she didn't know any kids at that point. No. She spoke French, right, little bits. Well, quite a bit, but she didn't actually, it's a, there's a difference between speaking French and actually being French. She didn't know any of the games, you know, she was different. Right, or the Hard songs or the ditties. No foreigners at this school. This is not the expat in Paris experience we were living. This is mm -hmm. a small village, a fishing, farming village. So, yeah, it was, mm. a, it was we were unusual. And But the whole point that they saw was, look, this is a great opportunity, welcome to the school, and we're gonna teach you just like we teach the other kids, and we're not gonna make special concessions for you because your mom has strange ideas about what you should eat. <laughs> right. And in France, uh, kids eat what the adults eat, or you go hungry. That's right, no short order cooking, no substitutes. At the table, everyone gets the same thing, and the French believe, okay, if you don't wanna eat it, that's fine, we're not gonna force you, because mm. food is fun and food is pleasurable, and it's so tasty, why wouldn't you want this? But if you really don't, that's fine, but you're not getting anything until your next meal, and presumably they'll be more hungry at the next right. meal and eat better. Well, as you know, in North America, where we were raised, you sit at the table until you finish your food. Mm. Anyway, in our family. And you'd say, I hate mashed potatoes. And they say, uh, taste them and finish them, or right. you won't leave the table. Right. The French, yeah, don't make it into a punitive situation. You have to remember that the meal, the family meal, is the highlight of the day for everybody. At noon? Yes. That's the big meal of the day. Mm -hmm. The shops close for an hour and a half or two hours. Everyone goes home. Everyone sits down. 99% of French people have a sit-down family meal with all family members every day. Oh, great. Still, and they I make it a priority. I want to go immediately. Well, the thing is that I was initially resistant because I thought it was fussy complicated. I was not a cook. I was, I burned pots. You're kidding. And no, and I didn't want, I was not interested. I didn't own a French cookbook. I was not, you know, France for me was not about food. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds embarrassing, but that's right, the way it was. Right, but you're no Julia Child. No, 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 far from it. And, but they gradually convinced me, and part of it is it's so much fun at the table. Everyone arrives, life slows down, the parents are at their most relaxed, the kids are happy to come to the table. It's a really great, mm. fun, social moment. And when mm. I saw that and how well the cousins ate and the kids at the school ate, I started to think, hmm, maybe they've got something here. I'm thinking if I went to, is it called Cantine? Cantine. Cantine, en français. <laughs> uh, to the Cantine of the school, the cafeteria. Yes, I the want school to eat. restaurant. Oh, the restaurant scolaire. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I would want to eat there with the probably a Michelin chef or two. Who knows? Who cooks well, for the it's, kids? It's the usual people who cook are the cantinières, and that's a very special role in French culture. It's associated with kind of nurturing, like the, the British nanny, but not a strict one, a loving mm. one. So whereas chefs in restaurants are still mostly male, the cooks in schools are mostly female. They also have staff that serve the food, help the kids eat the food, cut it up if they need to. Not the teachers. The teachers are getting their own beautiful three or four course hot lunch in a different room and relaxing. Really? Yes. They also eat the same thing the kids eat, which is an incentive to make it really tasty because you can bet mm -hmm. the teachers would have something to say if it wasn't really good. So the kids are eating things like, so carrot salad, beet salad, that's their starter. Beautiful lunch, uh, you know, with the salad right. presented first. A main course that uh, might be everything from lasagna to roast guinea fowl to... Duck confit. Yeah, yeah, duck confit with lentils. And they have a cheese course. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's really stinky cheese with bread, and then dessert, it's fresh fruit four days a week by Ministry of Education regulations, and they get a sweet treat once a week. So it's very, wow. it's, it's like a really balanced mm -hmm. meals, but really tasty, and they don't repeat the same dish more than once a month. Therefore, the kids are getting exposed to a lot of new tastes because you have to keep being sure. creative and come up with mm -hmm. new ideas. And always hot lunch? Always hot. What about uh, the de democratization of food in France? If you're a poor child in France, mm -hmm. Uh, do they work that out? They do. So, for example, in Paris, uh, you play on a sliding scale. The average price is $3. The, the lowest income families pay 20 cents. The highest income families pay $7, but the average works out to $3. Everyone gets the same meal, the same really nice three or four course mm. hot lunch. Even So I, I blog about this every week on my website, FrenchKidsEatEverything.com, and there's a page for French school lunch menus. And a couple weeks ago, I had the menu from the poorest village in France in the north, deindustrialized, beautiful food. They just make it a priority. And this, there's no government support from the federal government. This is all through local tax revenues. Mm. And when I was in France, it was difficult to find fake food. 
it is increasingly easier, and the French are very worried about what they call the McDonaldization of French culture. Mm. Because they do have supermarkets, they do mm -hmm. have McDonald's, although the McDonald's th serve things like fresh salads and fruit purees, but still. Right. But what they did about 10 years ago, they decided to really focus on fostering food education in the schools, banning all vending machines, making sure the lunches were super healthy and fun and interesting, and they have great curriculum about food in the school mm. itself. So the teachers would be teaching all about different tastes. And I have a whole chapter about that in the book because it's fascinating. I actually think we could learn a lot for curriculum here. The kids love it. Yes, absolutely. I like it. I, you know, Jamie Oliver has been doing things in schools and yes. it just makes sense to me. We have a city of fabulous chefs. Yes. Fabulous chefs and, and chefs being trained. So if you pulled some of the new chefs out of the Culinary Institute and put them in the I think we've solved it. There are a couple programs getting going, but they're largely labors of love and volunteer mm -hmm. labor. And mm -hmm. it would be great if it would become something that was more widespread. The other thing uh, your kids don't suffer from, I don't think they suffer from, is what you call, or somebody called, neophobia. Fear of new foods. Now, mm -hmm. so all kids go through a fear of new foods period. Of course. Pretty much. And it's, you know, we can talk about why, but anyway, basically all cultures. So the French kids do too. But because they've learned to eat so many yummy things, early on, by the time it hit, kicks in at two or three, sure they're saying no to a few things, but they've got a mm -hmm. huge range of foods to draw from already. Sure. And it doesn't last as long because the pa French parents know how to make sure it doesn't become a personality trait or a habit. So it, it's, they view it as a, a short phase, like the no phase. Right. It doesn't last very long. But you learn something about how you parent, how North Americans parent, and how the French parent, and some of it's a little tough to us. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Great. Okay. French kids eat everything, uh, how our family moved to France, cured picky eating, banned snacking, and discovered 10 simple rules for raising happy, healthy eaters. Karen LeBillon, our guest.